Hello, welcome to Holistic Lifestyles. My name is Jim Jurowitz. I'm with uh, my company called The Brainstorm Company, and we are a strategy consulting company that helps people bring their ideas into a successful business. And we're here today, and we will be coming to you monthly with the idea that holistic health or holistic lifestyles is an alternative to uh, taking all of the uh, medicines that are out there or the chemicals that are out there. And it's uh, quite a misnomer of what's there, so we are bringing this holistic health to you so that you understand what it's like to go to a chiropractor or do yoga and do meditations or try acupuncture. And so today we have as our guest Nancy Johnson from Intention to Balance. Nancy, thank you. Thank, thank you for you. coming on to the show. Thanks for inviting me. And um, we're going to kind of use you as a uh, catalyst for um, uh, being an authority on uh, holistic health or holistic lifestyles because you're experiencing it. And uh, although you're not authority on all of the categories, you can give us, uh, if you would, please give us an idea of where the dominance is of the Twin Cities market for holistic health versus others. We do know that um, food co-ops are very strong in the Twin Cities, one of the biggest in the country. So buying organic foods has been uh, pretty much a uh, staple in, in the Twin Cities. So uh, I consider that holistic uh, choices. So um, if you don't mind, please uh, tell us who you are and who your company is, and then we can talk a little deeper about holistic health. Sure. Well, um, I've been studying, I would call holistic health, which is treating the whole body for, uh, since I was a teenager, basically. And I understood at an early age how uh, your food and how the chemicals and different things affect the health of your body. And so fast forward, um, about nine years ago, I was introduced to essential oils. So that's primarily what I'm involved in and really love to teach and share about. And Minnesota, you know, is great. We have some great hospitals here, as everybody knows, and, and great clinics and things. And we're really starting to move in the right direction of people are understanding how things affect your body and what uh, needs to change in order to have ultimate health. And so I, I really love helping people um, find better health, and my motto is, is, is everybody deserves to feel good. So that's the premise I come from in teaching natural health. So I read the Twin Cities market uh, from the standpoint of the magazines that are in your um, coffee shops or in the libraries or wherever free magazines are available for, for being picked up. And there's always mental health magazines, there's always holistic magazines, there's always um, things to, for self-help. And um, because there's so many of them, um, and really they're the only ones other than the entertainment magazines, that I get the impression that uh, um, holistic lifestyle is pretty popular here. And certainly we know yoga is popular and meditation is popular. So. Do you believe that it's just that community that is uh, subscribing to Holistic Health, or do you think that it's something that people are discovering uh, new themselves, or what's your opinion about that? Well, it's not just that community. It's uh, growing exponentially, and a lot of it's um, education. And I'm a big believer in education, and that's what I help um, and work with people. I work with a lot of senior communities, and really, a lot of seniors are tired of being on medications and tired of all the effects that come from that. And so I educate them on uh, first line of defense is really where we come from. It's like trying to teach people what to try first and naturally, which seniors have known their whole life. You know, they, they're not surprised when I talk about peppermint or something or some other oil because they've used that a long time ago for different things. So they get it. and. Um, the thing, you know, teaching people yoga has been around for a long time. I practice it every day. The same with meditation. 
and people are understanding that they need, you know, there's so much noise in the world and things going on that they need to quiet themselves and, and really try meditation too to help their bodies calm down and, and just realize better health with less stress because so many people have stress and this is Mental Health Month actually, May, so I'm teaching some classes on that because emotional health, you know, is, is as important as physical health to people and they both you know tie into each other and that's part of the whole holistic mind body spirit cool so uh, and obviously in the healthcare industry um, insurances are now covering chiropractors and they're covering acupuncture and um, um, I don't know what a mystic does or clairvoyant people or healing touch people like that. Do you have an idea of, of how healing touch works? I do. I've actually studied Qigong, um, okay. which is a healing touch, and it really works with the energy, energy of your body, and that's also um, what essential oils work with because they're plants, and that's the immune system of the plant, basically. So, And oils vibrate at different energy, as does our body, and so they like talk to each other, and they really help the body uh, do what it's di designed to do naturally. So it's uh, a beautiful thing, as I like to say, that synergy that comes together. But there's so much going on with people's mental health. And I teach, too, about gut health, because gut health is so important, because it's your second brain. That's what they're calling it. And it, it connects um, to when people talk about stinking thinking and things like that. If the gut's not right, you know, it affects the brain as well. So it's just all important. So then should we be talking a little bit about diet and food and nutrition and uh, as part of this holistic uh, approach? Absolutely. I, I teach a lot on that as well because it all works together. You know, you have to get enough sleep. You have to move, you know, whatever it is, do something, just walk. You know, they say if you're 50 and above, just walking is your best exercise. And um, food, you know, eating organic as much as you can. Not everybody can, but really, you know, plant-based um, as much as you can as well. There's so many studies and so much more coming out about how plant-based makes you feel good and live longer and have better skin and all of those things that are involved together. Okay, so the people in our audience are probably, there's, I would say 50% of them probably uh, have not heard of or don't know how to discover holistic lifestyles. Um, can you give some advice to these people how to learn about you, how to discover you, how do they source you? Do they go to the internet, do they go to the library? How do, how do people discover what you do and what other people like you do? Well, we, you know, a lot of different ways. We do um, a lot on Facebook. We have a big group on Facebook, for those of you who enjoy Facebook. Um, where we post all of our classes um, all over the city and in different states too. I work with people all over the U.S. and uh, so sometimes I even do it on Zoom, you know, using the internet and having classes that way. So uh, you just, if um, going to intention to balance um, at gmail.com is my email and if you want I can always put you on an email list and you can hear about all the free classes that we offer. Okay, and what is your website? Can you identify your website too? Um, my website's also intentiontobalance.com, and it's just like it says, intention and then to balance.com. Great, so that at least gives them a resource there. So I have a little history in the natural products industry, and uh, I guess I'm old enough to say way back when. <laughs> <laughs> right. So way Me back too. when, I um, marketed a product called aromatherapy candles. Mm. And um, at that time, what we were doing with aromatherapy candles was taking essential oils and then putting it into this wax uh, candle. And, you know, it was an oxymoron because the benefits of the essential oil were negated by the petrochemical that was right. in the wax. So right. what happened then was uh, there was the introduction of soy wax so that now the chemical was eliminated. And, um, and, you know, aromatherapy was just, you know, a new word uh, coming out. Now, uh, I would have never bet that essential oils would be as popular as they are today uh, back then because 
um, you know, you don't need very much. So let's uh, get in a little deeper about what essential oils are um, because um, there's herbologists out there that, that uh, come up with products and there's healing stuff that you can do with essential oils and you know, there's diffusion things that you can do. So let's talk about what is the essence of essential oils and how does it work? Yeah, well basically- Cause there's, yeah. Excuse me, because there are so many different kinds of right. essential oils that you use for different things. Mm -hmm. and, and I know one thing for sure is that lavender is one of the more popular ones because it works. Right, <laughs> yes, and there's a reason for that. And essential oils are basically aromatic compounds and they come from all parts of the plants, the stems, the barks, the trees, and they're all distilled and create, depending upon um, what you have, what symptom you have, there's different effects. And so talking about vibration again, like lavender, for instance, your body vibrates at 62, and so does lavender. So lavender is considered one of those universal oils that if you don't know what to use, use lavender. So it's a really great oil for that. And the, you know, the difference, uh, the company I work with, it's so important. We're so about education because there's so many um, people now and companies that have, are everybody selling oils basically and they're putting oils in everything and not all oils are created equal. There's a company, um, APRC, that is an independent that tests oils and they tested 500 companies and only three were actually unadulterated and uh, the company I work with was one of them, and then there was two other, a boutique and another online company. And it makes a difference because synthetics, your body doesn't recognize synthetics. You need pure oil that's truly pure, and a lot of these bottles say they're pure, but they're really not. So it makes a difference on how it's gonna react to your body because our bodies are really smart, and they know, but they don't accept anything that's synthetic. They don't know what to do with it. They try to eliminate it. So having uh, pure essential oils makes all the difference. And I, I've helped people from everything from digestive issues, you know, to growing hair. Myself, I've grown my hair longer and better than it ever has through essential oils. And we really just try to help people replace things they're already using with things that are actually good for them and non-toxic and um, helping people's mental state better, both physically and emotionally, these oils can help with that too, so it's it's so fun watching, uh, you know, or having somebody call me and say I changed their life, or you know, just so um, amazed on what some little oil did for them to get rid of this extreme headache or things, something like that. Sure. So um, delivery system. So is using a diffuser the most popular way to deliver it, or is it applying it directly to your skin? How how does the uh, What's the delivery mechanisms? How does it work? Well, that's a really good question. Um, it's really personal. So, like, we have a catalog that says every oil we have can be diffused, basically. So you can always diffuse oils. That's always safe and good. Um, then there's a category of oils that you can use topically. Sometimes you can just put it on neat, which means you don't need to dilute it. Um, sometimes you can um, use a dilution like uh, fractionated coconut oil to make it go further or even stay in longer. And that's what we're finding more and more is, is how diluting an oil is actually better because it will stay on the skin longer and especially if you're putting it to address a certain issue. And then this is the kind of controversy about ingesting oils is not all oils are ingestible. And the ones that we have that are, that actually have a, a food supplement label on them that you can actually ingest them. So you wanna make sure before ingesting an oil that it's actually safe to do that and checking the bottle and a lot of them, a lot of oils even say don't, um, you know, put them on your skin. Well, if you can't put them on your skin, I don't know that I would even diffuse them because then they're still getting into your lungs. So, you know, safety is just such a big um, topic for me and, and I just wanna make sure that people are having, when they're using the oils, they're actually having a result. And if you're using something with synthetic, you might get an undesired result, and that wouldn't be good. Okay, so if I go into a natural product store or a whole food store, um, there's rows and rows and rows of essential oils. What do I look for to avoid picking the wrong essential oil or making a judgment on what's in that essential oil that is undesirable? Well, that's the 
million dollar question. Okay. <laughs> because the labeling, well, you let's know. Let's make some money. Right, right. <laughs> and the labeling with natural products these days is you can put anything as natural even though it's not. It can have, you know, like the bottle of uh, frankincense I have is, is all frankincense. But someone could put in, you know, uh, carrier oil and just put a couple drops of frankincense and still call it frankincense. So, you know, reading the labels sometimes can help if you know what you're looking for, but not always. And that's, you know, it's like natural products will probably never be regulated, but it would be nice if they would. Um, but that's the one thing we do. We actually have on the bottom of our bottles, it's called source to you.com where you can actually go and put a lot number in and you can actually see where that oil comes from and that it is pure and it's exactly what it says it is. Because there's, I mean, there's a ton sold on the internet too that I just wouldn't trust. Well, speaking about the internet, when something is sold, let's say if it's an oil coming from China, does it have to say made in China or does it not? I probably not because uh, the oils I work with are sourced from 47 different countries. Right. And you can look up on the on the sheet that tells about the oils and it'll tell you where it comes from. But I don't believe they have to put that on the bottle. And is there some kind of, you know, like UL rating or approval of the, on oils or is it just an open market? There is um, as far as, but not many people know about it or where to go because there's a lot of companies that test these oils for purity and potency and effectiveness, but you actually have to go there. You know, PubMed.gov has started to definitely have uh, lots of good data on there about oils, but again, they will talk about a specific oil and not always list the company. So you really have to be buyer beware and really do your research. And okay. And Let's talk uh, a little bit more about your seniors. You say you do a lot of seniors. So um, my perception is that essential oils is fragrance, for, you know, in the air and your, your intake is breathing it. Um, and, you know, for in most cases that would just be mood altering or, or make you feel better or, mm -hmm. you know, change your consciousness, I guess. How are seniors using the product and why do they want the product? Are they using it for pain, for arthritis? Well, how are they using it? Yeah, uh, you know, it's interesting. It's a number of different uh, issues that they use it for, but they're really, uh, most of them are tired of being on too many medications and they don't want to go on anymore to help the symptoms of what the other medications might have caused. And so a lot of seniors have digestive issues and that, you know, is from all different things, the food you eat and stress and aging. And um, so we definitely address that a lot, digestive issues, because even some of the medications, they have to be on them, which I'm not against medications that are needed, um, but it'll create constipation or diarrhea. And so that solves that issue for them, which is huge. Um, some of them don't have a great enough appetite. So there's oils that help with the appetite. And then, you know, some people can't even smell. They start losing their smell um, or their sense of taste. And we actually have oils that help with that too. So it's really fun to see. And, and a lot of them start losing their hair. So in order to, I had this uh, man, it was so funny. He kept putting all the oils. I was teaching a class. He's almost bald, but he kept putting all the oils on his head because he's like, all right, am I going to look like a Chia pet <laughs> 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 to grow? So. All right, so I'm going to advocate for uh, lavender mm -hmm. because um, I know that lavender is good for helping you sleep, but I also know that lavender, when you have an open cut, mm -hmm. you can use lavender on your open cut and it accelerates the healing. So a lot of people may not know that. So, um, But there's a lot of people that have sleep deprivation and um, having that... Uh, um, Lavender on your pillow, for example, will help you sleep better and things of that nature. So I'm glad we talked about the essential oils. So now I want to transition into something that's leading edge and, um, and the public knows very little about and is very confused about it, and that is CBD oils. Mm -hmm. What the heck is <laughs> CBD oils, right? Right. Um, yeah, they're basically cannabinoids. Um, and that's a whole nother thing that's happening too with the, the onset of, of CBD is 
everybody's producing it, whether it's in food or air freshener or whatever it is. They're just going to, you know, and people are selling different types and, and bottles. But the, the problem I have, kind of the similar with essential oils, is it's not regulated. And so you don't know what you're getting necessarily. And if you're getting synthetics, again, that might not be effective um, for what you're trying to resolve. And even worse, I think, is, is the dosage. They're not telling people how to use it. And you can have too much of a good thing. There's, you, you know, CBD oil needs to be dosed properly. And I work with a product called Copaiba, um, which has been around for a long time. In Brazil, it's called Copaiba, <laughs> which I like better. Yeah. Um, but it, it doesn't have some of the components that the CBD oil is. And that's the controversy about the THC, and, and there's a lot of oils that say they don't have THC in them, but you only have to, if it's less than, I think it's .005 or something, if you say that, that means it doesn't have THC in it. Okay, so let me back you up a bit because, again, the audience may not know what you're talking about, THC, oh. CBD, and whatever. So right. let me get to the basics, right? So CBD oils, basically originates from the marijuana plant. Correct. And marijuana is a weed, right, that grows wild, and therefore you can get any kind or whatever. And the history of marijuana, you know, let's say just since the hippie days, was that you could smoke marijuana and get high. And that component inside that marijuana is the THC. Right. So if people don't want to get high, then they need to realize that when they're doing CBD oils that it doesn't have THC in it, correct? And ideally, okay. I mean, and a lot of them claim that it doesn't have it, but it has that little bit small amount. And that's um, more of a problem with people who are like healthcare professionals and they need to test for it for a job and things like that, you know, airline professionals, um, because it would show up even if it's just a little bit. So there's still controversy and because it's not regulated, so we're hoping it will get regulated. Or in, in the world of sports, uh, a sports player may use CBD oil for pain. Right. And then it shows up on a test and he's banned from the league or uh, penalized for that. Right. And, and the CBD oils work more with the CB1 receptor in the brain, where the oil I work with, the Copaiba, works more with the CB1 and the CB2, which gets more, the CB2 is getting um, closer to the issue, you know, addressing the issue more closely. So it's it's an interesting topic because it's, um, and there's, you know, there's some value in some CBD oils for sure, but it's not knowing what you're getting is always the concern because if you get the wrong thing, it can actually be counterproductive in, in what you're actually trying to resolve. It may do the opposite. Right. So we're talking about this topic because nationally there are some states where all of it is open and legal, and then there's some states where none of it is open and legal. So uh, recreational marijuana is getting approved. You know, I think 16 states may have it. Um, the state of Colorado was one of the pioneers and is making a tremendous amount of money for the government in terms of tax base, and California has just been approved. So in Minnesota, what is the legal, um, ramification or the legal uh, permission, if you will, as to how to use it, because there is a product called medical uh, marijuana, and that doesn't have THC in it, and I think the state of Minnesota allows that, but you have to take it in pill form, is that correct? Or That's my understanding, and in there it's good because they're telling you what the dosage is. It's like you need to know the right amount. You know, some of these that are coming out, say, you know, 1,500 milligrams or grams, or and that's a lot. That's like too much for some people. And so, if it's actually prescribed, you know, by a doctor or someone with knowledge, that would make the total difference. And and how do you buy that? Do you have to have a doctor's permit to buy that? Do you, can you buy it on the shelf? How do you buy that medical marijuana? Do you know? I actually don't know. Okay, and um, in the products that you offer. Do you have medical marijuana or just CBD oils, or what? What is your, what is the offering that you have? And CBD is not actually an oil; it's a botanical. 
Okay. Um, so we um, have an essential oil that's called Copaiba. Okay. And that is our version, if you will, of CBD oil, but it just doesn't have the the THC, the, I forgot the long name is, tetracycline, yeah. right. whatever. <laughs> and so, but it has, you know, beta caraophylline and it has what is needed to address uh, very similar symptoms. And we actually tell people what the proper dosage is. And it's less is more because the more potent and powerful, the more effective an oil is. Okay, so we only have a little time left and I do want to get this last question. And so what is hemp? Because a lot of people are now buying hemp or seeing hemp around. Is that part of this family of product or is that something totally different? Well, and that's what the CBD oil people are complaining, not complaining, um, um, saying is that the hemp oil, then there's no THC in it. They're saying that's the difference is my understanding. And I don't claim to be well, no, <laughs> an authority on the CBD. We <laughs> prefer not to have an authority because this is a casual conversation to the general public. Yeah. And we want to make sure that people are at least aware of what right. the holistic uh, community is offering and saying. So Nancy, it was a thrill to uh, hear you. how smart you are about uh, essential oils and CBD oils. And thank you so much for getting us started into our holistic uh, television series. Well, and I so appreciate it and I truly hope everybody will start pursuing more natural options um, because they're there and they're growing and they're helping people and they're just amazing and it's a beautiful thing as I like to say. Great. Thank you very much.